And that's how the Salve SPCA became a diner. G. S. Roll tape. I say I try to escape, but there's a hundred different prison guards, each with their own key, trying to lock up, lock down, because they don't like what they see. Their criminal charges lead me to a cell, giving me a sentence because they think they can tell who I am. Send me to a personal hell, punishment to the crime, make me do the time, but I don't know what I'm charged with. And they know less than I do, because there are greater forces at work here. I'm talking about the prison. This stomach-turning, time-burning, call-it-learning, infested, detested, standardized, tested kind of a hellhole, death toll, on patrol, no soul, invention of attention, detention, you can see the tension. As if the whole structure will collapse without this structure. I call it high school. And you can call me cliche, but there isn't a way for me to sit down, shut up, and put up with their trumped-up, pumped-up image of me, so, to sum up. Fact. I'm a teenage kid trying to figure out what I did to land in my own suit. A new recruit and a long line of last place finishers, but then again, who isn't? See, we settle into our own little airtight, not right, out of sight to avoid a fight, stay out of trouble kind of a bubble. But it's not a bubble at all, and it shifts into a wall. Before it, you know it, your bubble is a cage, strengthening with age, so you've locked yourself away. Not a bubble, but just as transparent. And it doesn't take much for the bubble to pop. You begin to drop as your safety is burst. And the worst is your curse to never stop falling, failing, wailing, crying, screaming, separating, desecrating, fighting and biting tooth and nail not to fail, to pull yourself up from this bottomless pit, to free yourself from this pile of stuff. But wait. Here's where it gets interesting. What about when the stereotyping isn't, well, stereotypical? How do you deal? How do you feel when everyone's got their own idea what's real and who you are and what your past is? It's like everyone has their own pair of glasses. Reverse 3D. See in one dimension. You get a label and you're not able to separate the fact from the fable. In one man's eyes you are a jock. Brainless, painless, pick a fight, spend one night, but it's alright. Because you scored a touchdown last Friday. But ask a jock of your own kind, and you would be surprised to find they think that's wrong. You don't belong, or that's how they see through their glasses. New prescription. Fit the description of another click. Ironic, because you don't click, and you can even trick yourself into thinking that's your location, your vocation, where you're called to be eternally stationary, sedentary. Man, it's scary to think that you just locked into a four-year contract, no contact with anyone who's not in that sight line. Better luck in college. But you'd sign anyway. Because at least you'd know you had a team. Too bad it's not a choice. And your voice is silenced by their stare. You don't belong there, and sure it's not fair, but they don't care. They judge you silently, and sometimes not so silently. Shut up, you suck, get out, just go. It spells out, hey, you should know that you're not wanted, because you're not like us. So I see. Their eyes are clouded, shrouded in a mist, and you've missed out. And it doesn't take long for you to find out. No one takes the time to think about their vision, and maybe they should get that eye test at best, or at least maybe clean up their glasses, but time passes, and in your classes, in the hall, well, you're not a part of a group at all. Judgment's been passed, but no prison will take you. You'd think this would be liberating, celebrating, free to live how I want to be. No one can tie me down because I'm an individual, no residual regrets. But through my eyes, that's not the visual. Because why live as yourself if it also means... By yourself, tucked away on a dusty shelf, checked out a little by each group, but chosen by none, like a library. And on the contrary, that's not popularity, that's solidarity. Solitary confinement, refinement, come back when you're reformed, or reformed. And isn't there a difference? Because no matter how often you recreate, redecorate yourself and your views, try pot, try booze, you still lose. Because their glasses are x-ray, and they only see what they want you to be. The problem is that the true you is lead-lined, unrefined, undefined. Beautiful mind, beautiful soul, decent body. And the only way that everyone could know the real you would be to have every single cellmate walk up, shake things up, make up, and really talk. Get to know this cellmate. Then the real me or you could show, and it sounds corny. Believe me, I know. 
like a sideshow, so step right up, meet the new guy, or at least see them in a new light. So he really is a new guy. One full conversation, guaranteed freedom and acceptance, and the only price is your decision to come. Now I know that's not practical, but it's practically the only way you can change. Once your cell's been assigned and the key's been turned, who you really are will never be learned and you'll never know me. It's like I wear a sign that says, Hello, my name is whatever you judge me to be. How may I help you? And it's an easy presumption, but don't make that assumption, because when you assume, you make an ass out of you and me. But mostly you. Thing is, when you've been in prison enough, your own vision becomes distorted, contorted, unsupported by who you thought you were before conviction. But with conviction, everyone can see things more clearly. Just take another look. Or at least maybe get new glasses.